So as a closing of our interviews, I would really like to ask about climate crisis condition and how FAO can collectively do for a climate crisis in Indonesia. So the challenge of climate crisis are becoming more real as we've seen it every day in our daily life. What is actually the role of FAO on encouraging the government and the private sector to insist, anticipate the presence and impact of the climate crisis? Yeah, you see, whenever there is a, a crisis related to induced by climate change, it's always the small farmers and fishers that are affected, yeah. right? Uh, so what FAO is doing is actually FAO is working very closely with the governments, working on early warning system, working on adaptation mitigation, and also working on climate smart agriculture techniques, mm -hmm. such as you know drought resistant variety of seeds or uh, efficient water modeling, water accounting, and and these are the works that need to be done. Uh, you know, at the same time in one country you might have effects of flood. At the same time, you may have drought in other parts of the country. So we need to make sure that, you know, uh, we work together with the countries to provide the real-time solution. Uh, and and, and FAO has also worked in some parts of the world on early, early, early warning, early financing, early action, mm. which is also something called anticipatory action. Mm. Because you, you can anticipate something, but before that happens, you better get prepared. Yeah. You know? And FAO has developed some tools and techniques, and we are working with very, um, you know, with what the several governments and across the. In terms of climate crisis, um, do you have any lesson learned from other countries in terms of technologies that can be applied facing climate crisis and climate challenge on fishing and agricultural industries? I'll give you the example from NTT. I don't have to go far. NTT, FAO, together with the Ministry of Agriculture, we implemented a project on conservation agriculture. It's a very simple technology. NTT is facing drought all yep. the time. Yep. You know, they have issues with water. Water scarcity is a yep. problem. So the simple technology, it is, you know, going to the dry land, making holes without tilling, you know, using the organic mine manure and, wow. you know, and, 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 and uh, sowing um, corn seed and getting the production. And I visited some of the farmers that have practiced that, were supported at that time, and they are, they are still practicing this conservation agriculture. Okay. So okay. what they said was actually whatever corn they produce in same land, they used to have food supply for seven months. Thanks to this conservation agriculture, they have been able to have more food even during the lean season, which wow. means like October, November, December, even up to January. And some of the farmers even say that they managed to sell the surplus produce. Wow, they're and this is not like high tech, yeah, no, yeah. no, no rocket science involved. It's very simple technology. But before it's introduced, they were doing their conventional farming oh, practices, okay. you know. So, so there are good examples. And actually, that project was so successful. We even got requests from Kalimantan and Maluku Wonderful. by the farmers saying, like, can we also have the same technology? And this is very simple. Wonderful. And when I went to NTT, I asked the farmers. Do you think you have the confidence to go as resource persons to other parts of Indonesia? And everybody raised that. They said yes. They said, they said yes. Because they say they have seen the rest. The exactly. Rest of, you know. Honestly. So that is one way. Yeah. Uh, very simple. Technologies. Yeah. Simple technology. Simple technology and with the involvement of the communities. Yeah. Right? And, and it's proven that you cannot simply uh, impose something. You have to work together, organize yeah. them. And that is possible. And there are ways like, you know, you have these uh, drought prone areas or flood prone areas, you can introduce insurance schemes. I think Indonesia is far ahead also on this. Insurance for the crop, insurance for livestock, which is already happening. So yeah. these are simple things that can make the difference. Simple things that can make a difference at the times of climate crisis. Absolutely. At the time when they need the support, if right. there's a government standing behind their back, you know, they feel secured. Right. I love that words. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajendra, for joining us with CNBC Thank Indonesia. You. A pleasure Thank to have you here with us. Right. Dan itu tadi dialog kita di Prime World CNBC Indonesia bersama dengan Bapak Rajendra Arial, FAO Country Representative and Director for Indonesia and Timur Leste. Thank you so much.